Hi everyone, good morning. Um, thank you for being here. I'm super excited uh, to be here. This is my very first briefing I do uh, on Black Hat. Previously, I had a chance to present uh, two tools on the Arsenal in 2012 and 15, but this is my first time here. Uh, my name is Alejandro Hernandez. I'm from Chiapas, Mexico, which is in the southeast of the country, right over there. And I have been doing consulting and research for IOActive for almost six years now. Uh, I come uh, from a computer sciences background. I didn't study anything related to finance or economics. I must self-doubt on these uh, topics. And later on, I took a couple of courses in the Mexican uh, Stock Exchange in, in Mexico City and with a few other brokers. And in the end, I decided, decided to bridge both topics I'm interested in. Right, and I found interesting results. I will share with you today. Um, this will be the agenda we'll be discussing today. A quick introduction: the core of my research, of my analysis, the vulnerabilities, the responsible disclosure process, uh, regulators, organizations, some other ideas I have in mind that either me or you could develop in the future after the, the, the talk, and in the end, recommendations and conclusions for trading up. A quick disclaimer, uh, all the testing was performed using paper uh, money, which is demo accounts, fake money, right? Um, I only tested applications for end users, mobile, websites, and desktop applications, and the web servers that communicate uh, to these applications. I didn't test anything else. Still, there are a lot of technologies uh, behind this. There are a lot of protocols. There are a lot of other devices, for example, phones uh, with embedded software. Uh, I didn't have access to this information. And finally, this talk is not about high frequency trading, nor blockchain, nor how to get rich overnight. If you find a talk about that, let me know in, in, in other years. So this is how the stock markets looked years ago. The orders book were handmade, all the people yelling, sending orders, etc. Then we adopted technology. This is in the 80s, 90s, I guess. People, computers. This is the NYSE. And now the NYSE looks like this. More computers, less people. the open outcry is gone, and it was replaced by computers, by technologies, which are faster, cheaper, and easier to use. Nevertheless, there are some risks involved in this, and they, I will explain in a bit. Now, a quick introduction. Whenever the companies want money to develop their, uh, their projects or to grow, they can go either with private banks or with private investors, or they can go public. And when they go public, they are recognized or, uh, by, or distinguished by these uh, symbols, right? We have Amazon, Apple, Okta, etc. And they flow through different network routers, different switches, like stock exchanges, right? They are, like, like they, they are in charge of communicating all this trading information. The most famous one in the US, evidently, is the New York uh, Stock Exchange, NASDAQ. And we have other important ones in Tokyo, in London, in, in, in Shanghai, etc. Now, what information on what securities flow in, in them? The common stocks, other instruments, such as ETFs, in our particular industry, cybersecurity, we have two famous ETFs that I love the, 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 the tickers. Hack and Cyber. that's clever, that's cool. And also we have derivatives markets, uh, futures, options, uh, contracts for differences uh, that are getting famous uh, nowadays, and other markets such as Forex and crypto market, right? Now, it's important to distinguish the, the, uh, the relationship between the different peers. On banking system, we have only one entity, a financial entity, right? So the attackers can focus into hacking uh, this entity so they can change information in the da databases and the records, etc. right? On, on the other hand, on exchange markets, the information is distributed on different ledgers. There are logs everywhere. You cannot suddenly steal 100 shares of Apple because that won't work. You might steal it in one peer, in one point, but it wouldn't be the same in another peer, in the network. 
That said, the valuable information and the attack surface and the vectors are slightly different for those in retail banking, right? Doesn't make sense. The information is different, a bit different, and the attack uh, is, uh, the surface is, is different. Now, the brokers offer trading platforms. And this, in these platforms, you can do different things, such as funding your account uh, by credit card or through other banks. You can monitor your balances, cash balances, your network, your equity, your buying power, etc., your positions, and their performance, right? You can create alerts, you can buy and sell securities, um, etc. Now, independently, if you are a speculator, an intraday trader, or a buy and hold investor, whatever kind of investor you are, this information should be known only by and only by you and your broker, right? This is sensitive information. Now, how many users use these platforms? Let's see it by, by, by figures. TD Ameritrade, 11 uh, million funded accounts. Charles Schwab, 10 million accounts. MetaTrader is a very cool platform. It's a very complete pl platform. You can link your brokers um, to the software, and you can trade uh, using your account. It's the most famous one. We have Yahoo Finance. Initially, Yahoo Finance was um, uh, was only a market data provider. Nowadays, you can link your trading accounts, your broker accounts on Yahoo Finance, so you can keep track of your positions, etc. We have Robinhood, we have Coinbase, Market.com, OIQ Options, Abatrade. This is famous in Spain and in Latin America. Plus 500. Uh, Money.net, Ninja Trader, etc. Now, many of you recognize this uh, this show, right? It is Billions, and this is Bobby Axelrod. On Billions, it is uh, very often very often you see these uh, screens, but they are easily recognizable because these keyboards are from Bloomberg Terminal. Bloomberg ter Terminal uh, is a cost costly software it's a costly uh, environment i didn't have access to these uh, platforms because they are expensive they are up to uh, $2000 or more per month per terminal uh, nevertheless i checked on their website and i think they have top notch security they have uh, cutting edge uh, security on their platforms etc in another episode, I spotted Bobby Axelrod using this application, and then I remembered, hey, wait a minute, I think I have seen some of these labels before. I think Bobby uses TD Ameritrade. <laughs> I don't know, probably. This one was included in my analysis. It's one of my favorite uh, trading applications. Now, what did I test it? I tested 16 desktop applications, 34 mobile apps for Android and iOS, and 30 websites from 40 brokers, these ones. Ally Financial, Abatrade, Bitso, which is a, the biggest cryptocurrency market in Mexico, uh, Bloomberg for mobile phones. I didn't have access to that, but I only did a basic reverse engineering in this. Capital One, Charles Schwab, Coinbase, eSignal, eToro, eTrade, Fidelity, Frustrate, uh, Grupo Bolsa Mexicana de Valores, which is the Mexican stock market, IQ Option, uh, Merrill Edge, MetaTrader, Oanda for foreign exchange, Plus 500, Robinhood, Scott Ray, TD Ameritrade, TV Station, and finally Yahoo Finance. And I did it using um, Windows 7, Windows 10, an iPhone 6 with two different versions of iOS, and the Android emulator. The iOS non jailbroken, and the Android emulator. Uh, rooted by default, of course. Now, what did I check? I checked these security controls in here. For desktop, I checked, for example, do they implement two-factor authentication? Do they encrypt communication? Privacy mode, secure data stored, insecure data being sent to log files, and related stuff, like anti-exploiting mitigations or anti-reverse engineering. Similar to mobile, including including SSL certificate validation, root detection, and for the web portion, you know, the classic things uh, we all know. The OWASP top 10, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, um, security headers, infra vulnerabilities, weak password policies, automatic logout, lockout, uh, et cetera. 
Take a look at this. This is a very basic checklist, right? It's like 10 items, 15 items. This is only the tip of the iceberg for a more complete checklist that a real application uh, should pass through, right? The results, unfortunately, compared with retail banking, these results are way worse than those shown in 2013 and 2015. A colleague of mine from IOActive, Ariel Sanchez, did this research, this analysis for mobile banking uh, back then, and these results nowadays, 2018, are even worse than those ones for banks. I don't know why. I mean, banking uh, is one area, and trading is another area, and even if they are from the same financial entity, for some reason, they're not doing it, uh, they're good, doing it good, but not good enough as banking, right, as their cousins. Before I show you my results, uh, I would like to clarify that I don't, I, I don't want you, I don't want to transmit you uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's not easy to hack or to steal money from, from, from stock applications, right? It is possible through different means. It is possible through the, the following vulnerabilities I will show you. If an attacker has access to this information, of course, it will be possible that any of the attackers could steal your money, but not with two or three clicks, right? Okay. The biggest problems, encryption, in communication and in storage of passwords, of trading data. Another problem is DOS and authentication and session management problems. Now, unencrypted communications. 64% of the desktop apps and 6% of the mobile apps, uh, they send information unencrypted, either partially or fully unencrypted. Uh, what is the problem with that? If you're in a, in a coffee place, or whatever, you are in a public network, and your information is unencrypted, evidently an attacker would be able to intercept your username and password, right? Or alter the, 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 the traffic. Say, you send a quote for a particular stock, and before the price comes back to you to decide whether to buy or to sell a security, the attacker modifies the price. If the real price is 100 bucks, the attacker could tamper this to 95 bucks. So you think this is real information, but you would be trading based on misleading information, right? The attacker wouldn't gain this, still uh, is possible, right? It could uh, trick the users to buy stocks you wouldn't have in normal uh, circumstances. Now, the traffic normally goes over HTTP, over fix, I will explain this in a bit, and other proprietary protocols, binary protocols. See this, this is Avatrade, this is the login, page, even when you see the username, the password is encrypted, but after you're logged in, you can see, uh, for example, this order. You're buying an instrument and you can see everything, your account number, the amount, the price, etc. This is another one. Uh, Normally, desktop applications use third-party service providers for charting, for market research, uh, et cetera. And in this case, auto-chartist, uh, for example, the trader is sending a token in clear text. All I had to do was copy this token, put it in my browser, and I could take over the session from auto-chartist. Now here I'm logging in, logged in as the broker, right? This is a paid service, so it's just a quick example. This is an interesting example. This is eSignal. eSignal is a signal provider. You know, uh, on trading, the people who have the information uh, uh, fast are the guys who trade and get the more profit of it, right? The faster the information, the more the profit. So, in my understanding, Data Manager is a software it's a bridge, so you can connect to the internet, to the service you pay for, this is a paid service. Once you are connected, you receive the real-time market data, and later on you can connect the rest of your software, uh, uh, your trading applications, to this signal provider, so you receive real-time market data, right? The problem is, whenever you log in 
to the uh, website, your password is going in clear text. And then I saw the copyright message, 99 Data Broadcasting Corporation. I did a quick search and I found an SEC document uh, stating that uh, this company renamed uh, to Interactive Data Corporation who are the owners of eSignal. So I think it is easy to, uh, to see that this is an in-house develop development uh, that has been carried to this new century, right? 20 years ago, we were still using these protocols. This is another example. In the login page, you see clear text passwords, uh, sorry, clear text usernames. Not the password, but still you can enumerate users, for example. Now, let's move on to financial oriented protocols. This one, FIX. Financial Information Exchange Protocol. It was initially from 92. It's widely used by exchange and traders. Um, there are guidelines on how to implement it securely. However, I think not all the people implement it securely. Uh, as you can see, this is ASCII, binary ASCII. And these are many of the uses of this protocol from the buy side, sell side, banks, regulators, uh, brokers, hedge funds, etc. This is uh, widely used in institutional trading between houses, not, not retail trading. However, I have found a couple of applications that support this protocol. And yeah, let's see, for example, this application, FX Pro, they have their price server or their trade server, and the connection can be made in plain text using fix. Now let's see a demonstration. This is interactive brokers. They use encryption for almost everything. They communicate securely. However, this new feature they implemented, iBot, which is a voice or command uh, assistant, sends the information unencrypted over fix. Can, can you please enable my, my volume of my computer, please? Okay, in this second, I send a voice message, message. Price of Netflix, right? I got the price. One second. No, this is the energy. It's, it's okay, no worries. It's only for this, this, this demo. Same thing is over there. Thank you. So I set up Wireshark. Okay, it's it's not it's not working. Okay, however, I I say the voice message: price of Netflix. Then I say, buy 100 shares of Netflix at market price. And finally, I submitted the order. The rest of the communication is encrypted. The order went through. But in the end, if I analyze with Wireshark, Wireshark has a fixed protocol decoder, a basic one. And embedded, there is a plain text JSON message that if you follow the TCP IP stream, you can see everything somehow encrypted, partially encrypted, but the user input went unencrypted. You can see this there, buy 100 shares of Netflix at market price. This is a basic example, right? The communication is implemented um, properly, but except in a few parts of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now you can see positions. How much uh, 
stocks you have, you can see clear text stuff, right? The attackers could gain insight of your, of your portfolio. Uh, this one, you have uh, your balances, your cash balances sent to log files, right? Now, this one is interesting. In the login form, they have an SSL button, which is disabled by default. We all understand what SSL stands for, right? What about those traders that are not tech savvy and have no idea what SSL means? They would be like, well, if this comes by default and it's not enabled, I won't touch it because I have no idea what it is. And some of the communication would be unencrypted. Now, even with this button enabled, I noticed that in this particular application, Interactive Brokers, uh, they were sending, sorry, this is glitching. All right, they were sending a diagnostic log to their servers in clear text. The log that I showed you before with balances, with information, etc., is being sent to an encrypted as a zip file. This is Charles Schwab. You have your watch list to invest later, some symbols in there, and you can see them in plain text. I think this is a proprietary protocol, not sure. Uh, this is IQ option. This one is interesting. All the information goes through HTTPS. It's secure. However, I think one of the developers forgot uh, a request that goes over HTTP unencrypted. So one request was enough to intercept the session cookie, the SSID. So it's easy to put it in your browser and hijack the session because they are only using uh, this token, right? This is another one, Ninja Trader. They listen on a socket. Uh, you connect, no authentication, and you start receiving values, cash, etc., of the account. Now, let's move on to denial of service problems. Many of these applications listen on TCP IP ports, so you can integrate other applications. You know, the information flows uh, over TCP IP. Still, the brokers are uh, doing problems we had in the 90s, in 2000. If you do not limit the number of concurrent connections, evidently there will be a problem, right? Or if you do not free the resources upon termination, say the RAM memory, there will be a memory leakage, a memory exhaustion, right? Uh, some of these services listen on the local interface port. However, there are ways to reach or to attack the local port, such as uh, using this function in JavaScript, XML HTTP request, or the easiest way would be uh, financial-oriented malware, right? See this example. This is TD Ameritrade's Tinkersweam, their TCP order server. Three problems. Two problems. Uh, well, three problems, I would say. No limit for concurrent connections no waiting time between, between the buy or sell orders, and finally, there is no obfuscation on their final application. So I could reverse engineer their, their TCP software. So this is listening on the local port. If I connect to the local port and send random commands, I can see a syntax error. Then I went to the application, I reverse engineered the server, I found it, it took me a couple of hours to do the reverse engineering, I found the syntax error. I looked for uh, where exactly where they were throwing this error. And I found parse command. With this, I noticed, I followed, you know, I followed the rabbit, basically till I found the correct format. The order types, market types, limit orders. In the end, this is the format accepted. Order for the symbol, the amount, the type of the order, could be limit or market order, right? And I wrote this small C code that basically sends order every amount of second. Every time you send an order to the local port, thank you, <laughs> every time you, you send us a, an order to the local port, there is a pop-up in the application. 
the trader must submit the order. However, every time the pop-up pops up, uh, you can't do anything else unless you, un until you close the window. As you can see, this is the order pop-up attack. There are a lot of pop-ups. The trader basically can't do anything, and the application rendered useless. This is a form of denial of service, right? Imagine a malware that doesn't allow you to do anything on your application. Plus, for some reason, it triggered a null pointer dereference in Java. And the third problem is, with this error, the null pointer deref, you can send a troubleshooting report to the developers, which is a zip file containing a lot of, of information, including a screenshot. You can see here, view the report. If you see the zip file, which is the report, you can see a screenshot. There could be a privacy issue in this, because in this screenshot, you are disclosing to the developers your profit loss or any, anything you're showing in your main screen, like balances, cash balances, etc., could be disclosed to the developers. Is that necessary for the developers to know how much money you have invested or not? I don't know. What they could do is mask this information to avoid disclosing sensitive information. They fix this vulnerability. We've, we have been working closely with these guys, and they fix it quickly to the Ameritrade. So feel free to, uh, to use this, <laughs> this feature. Secondly, eSignal, the, the signal provider. This is a classic uh, memory leak through JavaScript, listening on the, on the local port. So this is a basic JavaScript, right? What I'm doing here, uh, when it loads, is an endless loop, and I'm sending a request to localhost through this. Now, imagine the, the investor clicks on a malicious link on his trading computer. Do you really know what's going on while you're reading this? for almost 5,000 users connected until it breaks. Now, as I said before, there are different applications that connect to this, this service. Automatically will be disconnected. This is another training application. This is a denial of service, right? So your signal providers are not providing you signals anymore. What they should do? What we did in 2000, in, in the 90s, limit the numbers of connections, timeouts on needle sessions, seconds between orders, you know, to control bottlenecks, et cetera. Like these guys from Interactive Brokers, they do not allow you to connect more than 51 times. They simply refuse you the connection. Now, let's move on to another interesting uh, thing. This is not a bug, seriously. This is a feature. Programming languages that allow DLL imports. Why would they do that? Because it's needed. In order to their customers to develop sophisticated tools, sophisticated trading robots, advanced chartings, uh, charts, indicators, etc., they give this extra functionality so you create your own stuff, right? And these trading languages are based on other languages, C, C++, C Sharp, Pascal. Nevertheless, some of them allow DLL imports. Some others warn you about that, and some others, they do not allow it at all. So the most used application, MetaTrader, they support DLL imports. However, they warn you. They tell you, hey, are you sure you want to allow DLL imports? And there is a small tick, a thick box, tick box. Again, we all know what a DLL is, of course, and the, the, the risks involved. What about those non-tech savvy traders out there? If you go to the internet, you will find many tutorials on how to download these indicators that are just imported to your MetaTrader and follow by a step-by-step -step tutorial, including this check mark. Just check this and you will be fine. And all the people, including me, wants to get rich overnight, of course. So you follow the tutorial step-by-step, -step, right? However, there is a risk in, in, involved. Uh, Ninja Trader, for example, they do not warn you. Still, they support DLL imports. 
This is an example of NinjaTrader. This is Calc popping up, uh, popping up. And we'll see a more um, realistic scenario. This is a backdoor disguised as an Ichimoku indicator. Ichimoku clouds are uh, famous technical analysis indicators. So this is MetaTrader, right? We are going to open the, the, the trading language editor. This is the indicator. What I'm doing here, I mean, I'm importing the indicator library, the cloud library, which is shell32.dll, and I'm telling the user, and here on init, I'm going to render to draw your pretty Ichimoku cloud. And for this, I'm going to download the cloud for ichimokuclouds.org, which is a somewhere, something weird in there. It's a base64 something. And I'm telling the, the, the trader, hey, I, here I'm going to decode the, the cloud, and I'm going to launch the, the cloud. So the naive trader, if he doesn't have any idea of, of the risks involved, he would download it, import it, he would open a chart, in this case it's an Euro uh, USD, and whenever he drags the chart, you can see all the, uh, the, the, the info, the, the dependencies here, allow DLL imports, this is dangerous. Still, F it, there are, these are the clouds. Behind, this is another box, I do netcat to the remote port, and I do have access to the computer. And that's it. So basically, it's a backdoor disguised as a technical analysis indicator. Thank you. Okay, 15 minutes. I have a lot of stuff to show you, a lot of, of it. I'm gonna speak faster, and I'm gonna go uh, quicker in here. Passwords, stored unencrypted. They send the password either to a config file or to, to the log files. And how attackers could extract this from your mobile or from your computer? You have either local access, like physical access to the computer, or uh, malware. Malware would be uh, the, the easiest way, right, to extract the, the information. If you know the path of the, where the information is stored, you can go and exfiltrate this. See, this is the user password, it's encrypted, not here. QWERTY FUBAR. New changed password, QWERTY FUBAR. More passwords. Base64 is not encryption, please. <laughs> QWERTY FUBAR. This is a very famous cryptocurrency app. I cannot name it because uh, due to responsible disclosure things, still I can show you a screenshot. The unlock pin, clear text in a SQLite database. These guys, I reported them, IQ option last year, clear text password. I changed the password to one, two, three, four, five, six, and this year, yeah, they fixed it. It is encrypted here. However, if you enable 2FA, the two-factor authentication password is one, two, three, six, uh, five, six, in a different file. Same problem. There are, there are others that are sending the, the password in clear text to the log files, and through as, a, through as a parameter on the URL. What is the problem with this? Even if, if it goes over HTTPS, if you put the password in a parameter or any other sensitive information, this URL will be stored in the web server access logs or will be stored in the browser um, history, right? So it's, it's not a good idea to, to transmit information over GET. Um, interactive brokers, even when they encrypt their password locally, they are not encrypting uh, third-party services passwords, such as eSignal in here, secret. Now, trading data stored unencrypted. The same problem, uh, other data. I don't know why developers love to disclose your balances, your, your, your orders, your positions, even personal information into log files. 
I have been a developers, a developer. Um, uh, for, if, if, uh, I develop for in different uh, technologies, different languages, and I know how good is uh, is uh, are the print tests, right? Or is the debugging uh, prints? However, in your final release, you should, you must remove this information. Otherwise, will happen. Uh, what's happening here now? More than 50% of the applications sent telling data when encrypted the mobile apps as well, the attackers could gain insight into your strategy, into your network, et cetera. Portfolio, balances, orders, watch lists. See, portfolio. This is Yahoo Finance. Whenever you link to the other brokers, these are my, my stocks, my positions, the amount of them, the cost base, and they are all in clear text, the symbols. They used to be, now we fixed it. Uh, we've been closely working with them as well. Another one, and another one, personal information, names, addresses, credit card information, only the name, not the rest. When you are funding your trading account on markets.com, orders, these guys even draw a pretty neat ASCII art, like there. It's the same form. This is this is cool. Still, they are disclosing it. The orders you sent, um, the server responses. Portfolios, portfolios, the symbols you look up. They are disclosed. The details of the symbols. Now, passwords. Some traders allow you to choose one, two, three, four as a password. Others tell you, hey, wait a second, the password you enter is too long. Hold on. <laughs> choose a weaker one, please. <laughs> the maximum 12 charts. There are others, such as IQ Option, Markets. They, they implement a password policy, but client side on JavaScript. But server side is not implemented. You can see here. The password one, two, three was accepted by the server. Now, authentication problems. 2FA. Most, this is interesting. Most applications implement it, but not by default. The user has to go to the configuration and enable it, um, uh, 2FA, either by SMS or email. And, but not most desktop applications, they do not implement it, even when they belong to the same broker, right? From the mobile apps, one quarter of them do not implement the fingerprint off. Even when they are installed in a, in a phone with biometric uh, sensor, they do not implement this. Now, another interesting example. Session tokens passed through the URL. Uh, when you're using your desktop application, you click in some button, they send you to the browser to see your account, your balances, etc. However, this token, which is a single sign-on token, could be stolen by the attacker. Imagine an uh, infinite loop running on the process list, so you can steal, it, it, it is a race on who wins the, the token, right? Like this one, IQ option, this is a Linux uh, box. I can see the process here with the token, so I wrote a, a quick loop to see who wins the race, right? The first who sent this request takes over the, the, the session. We have a demo for this, I will skip it. I would like to, to, to talk to you about other things. Uh, they imp Money.net implement their own web UI inside the application to avoid this, this problem. Uh, this is another problem. Session is still valid after logout on web platforms. You click on the logout button, your session is destroyed client side, but not server side. I saw this one you know, on E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, and recently, uh, Yahoo Finance. This is Yahoo Finance, I'm logged out. Five hours later, I send this request I got before to the server, and I could still transact. E-Trade, the same, Charles Schwab, the same. I'm not sure if they have fixed these wounds, I haven't had time to test it. Another interesting thing, privacy mode, against the shoulder surfing attacks. We can see here, think or swim, desktop, before privacy mode, after privacy mode. 
whenever you are trading on public spaces, right, and you don't want people to see how much money you have invested, this is a good feature. Never, nevertheless, not all the applications implement this. This is uh, for mobile. This is Yahoo Finance. You can see the important information is masked. Now, hard-coded secrets. It is easy to reverse engineer applications. For example, Merrill Edge for Android, they, uh, they obfuscate everything, so it makes it harder to reverse engineer. The rest of them, they love to disclose internal state, internal IP addresses, internal host name, private keys still, um, or third party service partner passwords. For example, this one, host names, private key over here for encryption, host names, IP addresses. Now on, anti exploitation mitigations. We all know ASLR, DEP, Stack Canaries. Most of the desktop apps do not have it implemented. Even the, the services that listen for TCP IP connections that are more exposed do not have these flags. For Linux, they do not have the read only uh, relocations table or position independent code or canaries as well in the case of IQ option, Ninja Trader, and many more. Only 232% validate the SSL certificate on, I, on, on mobile apps. Only Charles Schwab warned you, hey, there is an invalid certificate, the BORP certificate, and allows you to continue. A similar thing happens with root detection. Almost 80% of the app do not detect it, unlike banking apps. Banking apps, they detect it, and normally they don't run on compromised environment. These applications allow you to do that. For example, TD Ameritrade only warns you about uh, the root environment, but they allow you to trade on these environments. And then I found more vulnerabilities. I encourage you to go to the white paper and read them in detail. Unhandled deceptions, the classic cross-site scripting on web platforms. On the website, half percent, uh, half of them, the applications, do not have their secure or the HTTP TTP only flags on session cookies. And the 70% of the applications do not implement the classic security headers we all know, the CSP policies, the strict transport security, uh, the anti-XSS, et cetera. I only checked only the, the, these three only, but 70% do not implement them. This is a high level thing I checked. Uh, they invite you to to go to their education center, but they educate you on trading mostly, but not on cybersecurity. Only first trade, for example, they have a cybersecurity center. They help you, uh, they give you some guidance on how, how to trade safe or how to stay safe online, right? TD Ameritrade uh, have a browser checker. They give you uh, safety tips, etc. I think this is important to educate users on cybersecurity if I were a broker. There is more content, so please check also the white paper that will be available on the web, on Black Hat material. Now, what happened with the reported brokers? Uh, we found another issue there. The brokers do not have a main point of contact to receive bonds uh, on their products. Like, we reported many of the vulnerabilities, and many of the brokers didn't reply to us uh, quickly. The brokers who communicated and worked more closely with IOActive, uh, with us, to fix their boons are TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Yahoo Finance, and more recently, Interactive Brokers, to fix their boons. So this is a basic correlation here that I noticed. The biggest players, the guys who have more money, are the ones who invest more in cybersecurity. You can see it, you can feel it while you're testing their products, when you're using their products, right? You, you, you have this uh, sense of security um, while you're trading, right? So there is a correlation of it. So invest more in cybersecurity if you're a, a broker. Now, some ideas for you. Uh, on this research, I found uh, many applications that implement social trading. Now there are things like copycat trading, like followers on Twitter, if a trader is earning a lot of money or did a lot of money in the, in the past uh, months or weeks, you can copy exactly the same uh, trade the, 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 the user did. 
etc. But I think there are many risks involved. Now everything uh, is connected now. Even the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ, they are posting Instagram stories. They are involved with the people now. They invite you, they, they teach you what, a, what an ETF is, what an IPO is, etc. So social trading risk is an interesting topic. For example, sentiment analysis is a metric on the acceptance or rejection of certain instruments by the people. For example, this one. This is TD Ameritrade. And in addition to the fundamentals and technical analysis, there is a social signals tab. In this tab, you can see indicators, such as the sentiment analysis. That means that 73% of the people is talking positively about Nintendo, about Pokemon, about Pokemon Go, Mario, and there are some selected tweets. So I was thinking, well, how easy or how hard would be to bypass this filter? Who select these tweets? A machine, a human, you know, things like that. I think it would be uh, good to, to test this, uh, this software. There are other risks like fake news, you know, injecting fake data on Twitter, or confu confusion. Do you remember the PGP bug in the encryption software recently? Well, normally on social media you use the dollar sign to, to, to refer to a stock. For some reason, the encryption software that the problem with it caused that drop on the stock price of this company with the same symbol, PGP. It doesn't have to do anything with encryption software. Still, many people was like, hey, wait a second, there's a problem with PGP, but not this PGP, it's a different thing. They drop and they recovered. I wish I could spot that. Next time, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? A Python script to identify software and companies that do not belong to this. And when I see any, anything like this, I'm gonna go short. <laughs> Another interesting topic, uh, further research for, uh, for protocols, back office protocols, in exchanges, in institutional trading. This is only retail trading. This is only the surface of everything. I'm just scratching the applications, right? But behind, there are way more things to, to cover. There are more protocols. Today I only talked about HTTP, fix and a bit of binary protocols. But you can see here, taken from Wikipedia, a lot of different uh, protocols for uh, routing, for orders, etc. Mostly of them are used by institutional trading, you know, between institutions, in back offices, not on retail. So are these protocols being fast? Are these protocols being, I don't know, secured? Encryption, etc. I think it would be worth to take a look at this. What regulators say? I went to the SEC, to the websites, to the FINRA, to the SIGMA, and I didn't find anything related to fintech, any guidance to them. They only offer basic guidance on, 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 on line threats, virus, fishes, uh, phishing, uh, etc. generic guidance. I think they should develop a basic guideline to the fintechs who will develop uh, new trading software, right? It's like, hey, Wait a second, are you going to implement this on mobile, on desktop? Please ensure you at least have these features or test these features. I didn't find anything in, in them. Also, there are rating organizations that rate yearly the different brokers. And they give accolades, which is the best, the worst, etc., uh, related to their commissions, their tools, their research, the ease of use. But I don't see security up here. I think it should be here. At least they should check, I don't know, the, the, the password policy, two-factor authentication, and if they go over HTTPS, at least. Finally, recommendations for end users. Enable all the security features your broker offers you. 2FA, use a strong password, use biometric auth. Do not reuse passwords. It's a common uh, practice to use the same password for banking on your trailing applications, don't do that. Try to avoid public uh, hotspots, uh, use VPNs. Um, for developers and brokerage firms, test your applications against this, this basic checklist. While we were contacting the different brokerages, all of them were like, hey, no, 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 you're wrong. We are secure, we use military grade encryption, we do this, we do that, we support, well, 
my tests, my results, say a different story. So audit your applications internally, but see your problems outside from the box as well. Hire third party companies to test your, uh, your applications as well. The takeaways. Trading applications are less secure than banking applications nowadays. End user, please enable your security features. And finally, brokers, do not only improve your applications, also focus on your back, on your back end technologies, your protocols, your software. I, uh, there is a lot uh, behind it, uh, be, behind these applications. I only had access what any of you have, could have access, right? Applications on, on, on Play Store, etc., on the internet. But what about institutional trading, etc.? And that's it. Thank you very much. Do I still have time for questions or any question? No. So if you have any question, we can go to the next room. Thank you.